Hi, this is Brian with Profitless Media and Post, and today we're going to take a look at some methods to track difficult shots in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. First, we're going to take a look at how to track an object that is occluded for several frames and be able to continue that track throughout the entire shot. Then we're going to take a look at a track that goes outside the frame and how we can continue that track even though the pattern is off the frame. And last, we're going to take a look at how to track a corner of an object when objects behind the corner will disrupt our tracking pattern. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. First track we're going to take a look at is right here on this building. We have this little hole here. We're going to have a couple different problems we have to deal with. First off, it's not visible at the very beginning. And then as we go through, there's a pole that occludes that little hole for a handful of frames. One way to approach this is to track on this side of the pole to the beginning as much as we can get and then go to the other side and track it from here to the end. And then we can correct where it's occluded by using Bezier splines. So let me show you how we can do that. So let's, I'm going to start here and let's add a tracker. And let's bring that tracker over here. And make it a little bit smaller and this search region smaller. Okay, and so let's track this to the beginning. You can see that it got it goes off screen, so it's a little messed up there, but we'll get to that in a minute. And so now we're going to go down here and go to the other side of the pole until we see that marker available again. So somewhere around there. And we're just going to grab our tracker and just move it over here. Try to line it up as best we can in the center. And then we're going to track to the end. So now we have this tracker, but the interpolation between this keyframe and this keyframe where it's occluded by the pole is actually a straight line. So you see, as we get closer, you can see that the center is off. So we can fix that by going into the spline. So let's click on spline, turn on our tracker, and let's fit all. I'm going to turn on the zoom button, and then I'm just going to zoom in close to the area that we're working. I'm going to turn that off. So one, one way we can deal with this is, let's get right close to the pole, is we can grab this last keyframe, and as soon as we do, we have our Bezier spline, and we can adjust this spline so that the curve lines up so that this point is in the center. So let's just grab this spline, and we can start moving it up, and you can see, there we go. Now it's in the center. So now if we go back each frame, you can see that's staying right in the center. Now if we do the same thing on the other side, we should have a decent curve for our tracker. So I'm going to grab right here, and let's just bring that up a little bit, maybe somewhere like that, see how that works. Yeah, great. So that's one way we can line up the tracker as it goes through behind this pole. Now let's take a look at the very beginning. And we'll go to maybe frame five, six. Zoom in here a little bit. So from frame six to the beginning is not working. So another method that we can use to track things like this where the object is no longer on the screen is to append the tracker. And to do that, we go over to the inspector. And under path center, instead of pattern center, Let's just switch that over to Track Center Appended. Now we can move our pattern anywhere we want to track something else. We could even just track like maybe right here. But I'm going to try this. So I'm going to go down here. Uh, so this will be our tracking pattern, but it's going to continue this animation. So let's track to the beginning. And you can see what just happened. So the pattern snapped back up there. And now you can see we have a nice smooth animation, even though we don't have anything to track. Okay. That's a couple different methods. And now let's take a look at the last one, which is to track a corner. So I'm going to delete that tracker. Let's add uh, another tracker. Oops. 
with this one we're going to try to track this building and so I'm going to bring this down here and let put that on the corner and let's see what happens when we try to track this and as soon as those mountains come up you can see it pushes the pattern off so that's not going to work so let's undo that one way to do this is to offset track so we can track something else and then using that tracking information we can figure out the, that location on the corner so I'm going to bring my tracker down here and that's the this is going to move a little bit different, but if we keyframe the offset, we're going to be able to get that corner position. So here we have our tracking pattern. Let's just track this through the shot and I'll show you how this works. Let's go back to the beginning. You have a couple options here for offset tracking. If you look in the inspector down in the bottom, you have an X and Y offset. You can use these to move the offset or the center of our tracking position wherever you want. Or you can do it by hand by clicking on this button up here in the top left. Once that's blue, now you can grab your center and once I grab it you can see I'm getting this red line and I can position this line wherever I want. So I'm going to bring this right to the corner. Now I know that this animation is not the same as this corner, but it's going to be pretty close. So let's see what happens. So that's going to be our new center. And as we go through, you can see it's starting to slip off a little bit. So let's go to the end. And if we come in close, you can see that it's come off a little bit. What we can do is keyframe. So I'm going to go back to the beginning again. And if we go down to the X and Y offset, in our inspector. Let's just click on the little diamonds so that we're keyframing. And we have a keyframe here now. Now let's go to the end and then we'll just set up set up a keyframe here. So bring that right to the corner. And let's see how that worked out. Okay, that's working pretty nice. It looks like we're gonna have to add maybe one more in the center. Comes off a little bit. So now we've used this tracking information with three keyframes, figure out where that corner is. And now we can use that to set up our masks or whatever it is. So if I added in a, let's grab a background and an ellipse mask, just put it in here, whoops. Put this in here and if I grab the center, right click and go to the center connect to, oops, let's grab the ellipse, right click, ellipse one center, connect to, tracker one, offset position, it'll snap it to that corner. Like that, it's hard to see because it's so big, but let's zoom this in. Now you can see that we have our ellipse mask on the corner. So those are just a few different methods that you can use to help with tricky tracking situations in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you again in the next video.